Hello! Welcome back to More Fun Making It uh, Work, maybe. And episode two of this incredible journey through the most broken and abused ZX Spectrum I'm aware ever existed. That's a carefully worded, legally factual statement. Don't believe me? Well, wait till you see what's coming up. To save me the effort of editing a recap into this video, you should definitely go and watch the first episode. It's ever so good. It's got cows in it. I will, however, briefly sum up what happened in case you're tied to a chair and being forced to watch this as some form of cruel and unusual torture. It was all broken. All of it. Every section I looked at last time had been butchered in some way. You may recall at the end of the last video, I finally, after a tour of the devastation around the board, decided to take a look at the RAM, specifically the lower RAM. Most broken ZX Spectrums contain a faulty lower RAM chip, even if the actual fault is a missing rubber foot. The 4116 RAM chips in early ZX Spectrums are so delicate they'll fail catastrophically out of general spite. It's always the- Not now, Johnny. Oh. I'm so sorry. Where was I? Oh yeah, the three socketed chips have been pulled out and tested in the chip tester gadget and are working as expected. If you look a little closer here, the chips not socketed don't appear to be matching. These two here are the same and these two here are also the same. This one is odd. This means at least six of these chips have been removed at some point with only three being replaced with sockets. I got a bad feeling about this. The first one was removed and tested fine. No damage under this one. Maybe this is an original chip. This one next. One thing I always strive to do is keep learning new things. Everything can be an opportunity to learn. And I can sum up what I learned during the course of this lower RAM section of the repair quite simply. Never assume that once you've found the fault, that it's the last fault. The second one was also removed without damage. The complete lack of carnage under both of these ITT branded chips lends weight to the theory they're original. The chip also passed its test. I knew I was facing having to remove all of the RAM chips. It was just a matter of in which order. I picked a likely candidate using scientific eeny meeny miny mo and had at it. This one, although not socketed, was hiding some damage. Missing pads on the back. plus a floating trace on the top, which was shorting to the 5 volt pin. And the chip tested fine. Oh, and that floating trace, also broken. Onwards. Another destroyed pad back here under IC9. Surprisingly little damage to the top of the board. Another good chip too. IC13 next. This chip was very stubborn. These old boards with their flimsy, uncovered traces are not easy to work on, even with the right tools. A little too much heat and you burn off a pad. Not enough and you rip out a trace. And that's on a board that hasn't been worked on before. I'll take the blame for the trace that comes away with this chip. But inside, my inner child is screaming, It's not my fault! And judging by the surrounding damage, Juvenile Lee might have a point. You can see all of the legs are wiggling as I move the chip above. This is normally a sign they're all free and the chip is ready to be released. But it still didn't want to lift. There's really not much I could do at this point. Oh well, can't win them all. It wasn't my fault though. Quiet, Juvie Lee. Nuts. And our first bad chip. That's a step closer to a repair. I wonder how many more steps there are. Oh, 
The three remaining chips are all socketed. I don't expect to see less damage beneath these. And I'm not disappointed, it's a mess. This is broken, so is this, and this, and this, and possibly this. Somehow they managed to rip out the thick ground trace altogether. Two more sockets to go. Might as well do both at once. I don't sound very encouraged by what I find. Under IC6 and IC7 there are multiple problems. At the time I spotted this broken trace here, but possibly due to the sheer amount of damage snow blinding me, I failed to spot the one below was also broken. Later it's going to cause me some big headaches. Around now I'm beginning to wonder if this will ever work again. Before I started the repair, I'd bought three motherboards from eBay in non-working, untested condition. Two of them, I decided, weren't worth the effort to repair because they were in a terrible state. This board makes both of those look like they'd just rolled out of the factory. But this was now becoming a challenge. Was it really possible to bring this sorry old thing back to life? Even now watching this back, I've got my doubts. I used my dubious Photoshop skills to sketch the traces and print them out so I could record what was broken and where. This would make putting bodge wires on the other side easier once all the sockets were in place. Watch me here as I efficiently place all of the sockets into the board and solder all of them in place in one go. Isn't that great? Well, no. This isn't how I'll be doing this in the future. You'll see when I come to replace all of the upper RAM sockets, I solder each of them one at a time and then test. It might take a little longer this way, but if I'd done this with these lower RAM sockets, I might have spotted the two extra broken traces which will later cause me to spend hours chasing faults around the whole board. You live and learn. No, not there. Connecting to the wrong one. Can I? Yep. Definitely connected it to the wrong one. Actually, to that one. It's sometimes very confusing looking at rows of shiny solder points and working out which ones you're supposed to be connecting to from a diagram that's flipped. Sockets fitted, bodges bodged, tested and known working 4116 RAM chips inserted. I'm nervous. Are you nervous? And now for the moment of... Oh, wait, battery died right there. Okay, now for the moment of... Oh, bugger. Still broken. 
Upon my initial inspection, I noticed some problems around the video encoder chip area. Before I even get started removing it, you can already see some missing pads. And, well, this appears to be where someone used copper braid instead of solder. Incredibly, there are no shorts here where there shouldn't be connectivity. Just above the problem chip, we see the pins for TR3. This transistor is responsible for amplifying the clock signal. Those pads look pretty bad, so before I get stuck into the video encoder chip, I decide to take TR3 out and make it right. You never know, this could be the root cause of all the problems. It's not. Despite the terrible camera work, the transistor is not faulty. Time to take out the chip. I'm taking a little extra care to remove some of the copper strands from the solder joints before using the desolder station. Sucking them into the nozzle could wreak havoc, causing blockages. So it's a good idea to remove as much as I can now. There's a lot of solder on top as we saw before. Oh, where's my special screwdriver? There it is. With much wiggling, the chip eventually comes free. <laughs> oh, shit. Language parsley. Surely it can't be that bad. It's just the video encoder chip after all. What could possibly... <gasps> Holy mother forking shirt balls. Let's count the missing pads on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pads missing or destroyed here out of 18. That's not a great hit rate. And the bottom? One, two, three, four, five, six, and a half. As I said before, I don't want to keep ragging on the workmanship that resulted in this, well, you've seen what it is like. I know everyone has to start somewhere, but a word of advice for anyone wanting to start out. If it looks like this, stop, get help, maybe even another hobby. For comparison, I desoldered the same chip from another issue too. Here's a nice picture for you. Damage pads noted along with the ones not actually used. Has anyone seen my blue tack? It's not a pretty sight. Let the bodges commence. The big surprise here is, despite losing all those pads, it only needs the one bodge wire. Many of the pins in the missing pads are not connected to anything. So this wire here needs to be connected to this leg here. I've left the end of this wire long to allow me to wrap it around the leg of the pin. Not the neatest, but considering how it was before I started, hitting it repeatedly with a muddy shovel would have made it better. Before putting the chip back in the socket, I cleaned around the legs and found this. It's obviously a bodge wire and still attached to one of the legs. So what does this leg do? Something important, I imagine. According to the schematic, nothing. It's a bodge to nowhere. For now, I'll install a new LM1889N for testing. Surely this time, with all of that damage repaired, this has to be it. No, nothing, nada. <sighs> Remember way back at the start of episode one, 
I said how most broken ZX Spectrums would have one or maybe two of the expected faults. So far, we've had a dodgy looking spider mod, along with a CPU welded to its socket, broken traces under the CPU, random oh my word. bodges and broken traces under the ROM, broken traces, random shrapnel, and fake bodges under a capacitor, many broken traces under the lower RAM, a faulty lower RAM chip, and carnage under the video encoder chip. That's 10 different faults. If you count each repaired trace under the lower RAM separately, it's even more. Whenever you attempt a repair on something as old and delicate as this Issue 2 board, you run the risk of making things worse. The more complicated the repair, the greater the chance you'll break something or introduce another fault. I'm not quite sure what happens to that probability curve when trying to put right something as fundamentally broken as this. And we're not finished yet. There's even more to come. To see just how much worse it can get, you'll have to come back for the next episode. Or if this is the future, you're watching this in your hover car, the next episode should have been released by then. Probably. Thank you for watching this far, and thank you for all of the subs from the last episode, which smashed me through 1,000 subscribers. Until next time, bye!